Hey guys, what's going on? What is going on, guys? It is Local John 1812 and, and JRod 84. That's right. We are back again, guys. We are here to do our sports talk show. Yeah, I, I just did that. It, it's, I say it's been a while. Eight months. That's. Has it been eight months? Mm, no, I think about six. Six. Yeah, I see. Yeah, it's been six. It, it's been a while. Yeah, I see. It has been a while. We, we've been kind of like letting things kind of like fester up a little bit too. I've been having other videos and stuff I had to do. Uh, even today I had stuff that was going on that I was like, man, I, I'm busy. I don't know if I can do this. But you know what? I really wanted to see if I could get uh, in here with Jay and really get something going. Yeah. I, I see. Yeah, absolutely. I see no. I see no. We, we miss doing it. Yeah. And we're here at the Washington Square Mall. We usually film over on that side over there but one of the in, another individuals over there so we're near timeout lounge and we can hear them playing some music now so that's going crazy so hopefully that doesn't give us any uh copyright stuff but it's really kind of muffled you really can't tell what is being said so yeah. we should be okay but on the sports talk show we can talk about anything sports related and sometimes we dabble in some other stuff but today i think we really want to focus on college football and also yeah. upcoming stuff for kentucky and other teams as well as uh, maybe some NFL action. Yeah. So uh, let's get into it. Let's go with the. It's fresh on our minds. The Kentucky game last uh, yesterday. Yeah. I see. Yeah, that's good. They moved to. They moved to four and zero. Four and zero. Won the SEC opener. SEC opener on the road, forty five twenty eight at Vanderbilt. Yes, that was a big win. That was a huge win for Kentucky. That really kind of set the tone that the earlier games that they had. Yes, they were against. Um, lesser opponents of some sort, yeah. but not really. I, I would argue this. Uh, was it uh, Akron? Did we play Akron? Yeah, that was Akron last week. Yeah, and I would say they may have played a little bit better than Vanderbilt did. Well, and uh, did we play Eastern Kentucky early? Yeah, th they played better than Vanderbilt for sure. I felt like. Well, I, well, probably noticed the you know the emphasis was you know I see with all the, with all the talent that they had, mm -hmm. you kind of. Um, I said, you kind of figure, you know, with, well, with the offense that they had, you kind of figured that they wanted to get off to a, a fast start. Right. And they got off to a fast start. I see you had, yes. a, a I see you had a, two touchdown runs and a pick six, and they opened up with a 21 nothing lead at the end of the first quarter. And I know throughout the rest of the first half, and including that second quarter, they kind of got a little lackadaisical, let Vanderbilt crawl in just a little bit, get some momentum. But it was no to prevail for Vandy, but, or for Vandy. They just couldn't get it done in the second half, and the Cats – Kept that strong lead. Yeah, I, I see. Yeah, it was good. It's, I mean, it was a, a little bit of a little bit of an issue with the offense. You know, kind of like you know, sh well, shooting themselves in the foot, so to speak. I see. The first half, they pretty much just, at least for like the first twenty-five minutes or so, I see they pretty much did anything and everything they wanted to. Right. After that, things started to get a little, you know, a little lackadaisical, a little out of control, but. I mean, you know, they they managed, you know, to they managed to pull it together. I yep. mean, don't, I mean, to say pull out the win. I want to see more from Leary. Uh, uh, I think with him to be our quarterback in the SEC, we're gonna have to see a lot more out of him. But boy, oh boy, I love Davis in the backfield. I, I absolutely. Uh, what do. a great running back he is. I do. I really, I really do. I said no it was, no. I said you know it was a homecoming. Well, kind of like the homecoming. Him seeing as how he was Vandy's running back last year. Yep. I said he got. You know, he had a couple. I see he had a couple of touchdowns. I see, you know, he. I see he did great. I said also, you know, Larry. He passed for two oh five. It's the first. This was the first game since twenty nineteen that he's had more interceptions than touchdowns. He only had one touchdown pass, but and two interceptions. Yeah. But I think you know it made up for it. Like I said, Davis had a touchdown run. McLean had a touchdown run, and also the player of the game, which I think was Max Maxwell Harrison. I see two pick sixes. I awesome. First, That's unbelievable to even get it once in a game. Exactly. Let alone twice. To say the first Kentucky player to do so. Yes. I mean, I didn't even know that stat existed just for Kentucky players only, but I, I tell you what, you put that in the company of a lot of people who have not gotten two interceptions in a game, and some are Hall of Famers in the NFL, you know. So, exactly. Uh, yes. Kudos to that guy. I mean, that's awesome uh, for that uh, young athlete to get out there and do that. It's awesome. Yeah. That, that'll definitely translate going into the next level. Now, Kentucky has uh, Florida coming up next week. It'll be at uh, yes. uh, at home. It'll yes. be for yeah, the home be at, game. Yes, it'll be at home. It's 11 o'clock. I see, it's an early kickoff game. Uh, I, see, I know some people were taking a little bit of issue with, you know, with it being an early game. I was yeah. like, uh, 
I was like, at first, it's just like, you know what? It, it really doesn't even matter what time of the day that you play, whether it's early kickoff or late kickoff. Just go get the W. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I'm looking forward to it. I think Kentucky can get this victory and move to 5-0 and if they get that victory. Uh, um, yeah, I said And that would, be, that would be huge. Be, I don't know how many starts that uh, Mr. Stoops has that puts him at 5-0 and at the start of the season. But I know he might have at least one or two. In there. Um, well, I think this is the third year in a row they yeah. started for now. Which so this would be good. I know, and, and to move to it's it's crazy to think starting four and zero is good, but to move to five and zero is even better. It just sets you up so much better if you can get those first five to make a good bowl game instead of saying we're going to make some type of bowl game. Yeah, I said well. I said, well, actually, well com- coming into the season, you know, based on all the talent that they had on offense and the returning guys on defense, and with the schedule being as it is, most, um, a lot of fans predict, you know, if, if there ever were a year that Kentucky can do something really special on the gridiron, that this would be the year to do yep. so. Yep. Guys, you know, the schedules worked in their favor. And, and looking around the rest of the SEC landscape, I said, you know, it's – well, not just SEC landscape, but the college football landscape in general. Mm-hmm. It's it's different. It's different than what it has been because usually it's just like maybe one team in one conference that's head and shoulders above everybody else, and maybe like two or three teams nationwide that that are the same. Yeah, it's a little bit different this year. Yeah, that's it. somewhat. It's still early though. Yeah, it's still early. Yeah, I yeah I say it's early. What do they what do they always say? The cream rises to the uh, top. Yeah. Right. So eventually we will see. Uh, maybe it will fluster out to where we still have this kind of nucleus of a bunch of teams being really good. Or eventually if we see to the top, there is actually there is actually four or five that are really good and the rest were just trying to hang with them, but they could not in the long stand of things. Speaking of a team hanging on and doing pretty good um, and not doing that great and everybody's kind of giving them, you know, a little bit of crazy, you know, talking about them is Alabama. You know, Alabama, yeah, Alabama, you know, we always say Alabama will be Alabama. They'll still be there when it's all said and done. Yes. So Alabama got a – that was a big win for them yesterday. Yeah, yeah, that's – yeah, they, they got a big win, 24-10 to 10 over Ole Miss. Uh, yeah, both teams were in the top 15. Yeah. And in which I watched it. Alabama, Alabama, they were struggling early. Early. But they came back and won. And that's a veteran coach there for you. That's a Hall of Fame coach and Nick Saban to get make sure they get that victory at home. Uh, I don't know who Alabama has coming up, but uh, – it's going to be a lot of eyes on them. They're, what everybody is waiting for, here's what everybody's waiting for. If you're an Alabama fan, let me tell you what everybody's trying to wait for. They're trying to wait for the old Alabama where you blow out somebody by like 52 to 6. Mm-hmm. That's what they're looking for. And, and you're not giving them that, so they're going to pick on you. Uh, but I still think until Alabama doesn't have Nick Saban there, I'm always going to look at Alabama having a possibility to be in the conversation for things. Well, I I, you know, I, I think so. I think yeah. so. I mean, it's, it's obvious that it, this team isn't, you know, the Alabama that everybody's been accustomed to mm-hmm. seeing. But I, you you kind of figure at some point, you know, Nick Saban's going Saban's to have these guys ready. You know, he's going to have them in the conversation, you know, to compete, you know, for the SEC championship. That's right. And, well, not just the SEC championship, but – Maybe, national, maybe, yes, maybe, maybe a national championship as well. Mm-hmm. I, so, I can see that, yeah, for I sure. See, yeah, I said, of course, you, I said, of course, you probably have to get past um, Georgia, which Georgia has some uh, was struggling a little bit. Of, well, of course, yesterday they reminded everybody why they they blew out UAB yesterday, pretty much reassuring everyone that they're the two time defending champs. And, and until someone knocks them and, off, and <laughs> until somebody <laughs> knocks them off, they're, 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 they're still going to be at. They're still going to be a different one. Yep, the champ is here, as they still say, when they step onto the football field with their coaching staff and players. Yes. Uh, but, yeah, that's a that's exciting stuff. I would say uh, another thing that we're going to talk about now, we're going to move a little bit from uh, college football. We're going to go into college basketball, Big Z, for Kentucky. Is he going to be available or not? Guess what I found out? Uh, I think it was on Kentucky uh, Roll Call. It says something about on the Kentucky Athletic page or something, Big Z's listed on the roster. Like on, on oh. some type of uh, area for – I don't want to necessarily say official roster. Let's just say it's a roster of players or – not even, let's not even say the roster. It's a list of players. He's listed. He's listed on there. So that to me – and it's on a uh, University of Kentucky website. So if it's on the Kentucky website and his name's on there, I mean, I'm not going to put a bunch into that because, I mean, it could just be a thing that whoever did it 
accidentally put him on or forgot to take him off or something. But all signs to me feel like this is a slow process, but Big Z is going to play. And a lot of people think, well, he's not going to play now until after these months. No, I, I think they'll figure this out before then, and I think he'll play sooner than what we think. I think Big Z will be part of the roster for Kentucky basketball. What do you think? Uh, you, well, you know, I, I, I believe he will. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, just... I mean, you know, to, I said, to me, the whole ordeal was, you know, was just wild. I said, you know, first, that's, I guess, you know, that's kind of why I didn't, I really, I really don't throw myself, you know, into like, become like, and become overzealous, you know, whenever big name rec recruits come to play. Especially last second. I mean, you know, as, you know especially at the last second, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, whether they're five, whether they're five, four or five star recruit here in the States or they're international prospect because it's it all it always seems like you see this it's an underlined issue that somehow blows up after I'm gonna say you know after they leave and then it just throws everything off it does I mean, it, it does yeah I said, with, with the whole thing with Big Z I'm like look um, we need. I, I do really want him to play, though. I mean, like I'm, this is. I, I, I think this too. is like the. Like I'm not saying we could not get it done if Big Z don't play, but I feel like Big Z is the messing piece. Like I think he's, he's the best person to be next to Bradshaw, you know, more than the other pieces we have. I, I really feel like Big Z, would be a better complimentary big next to Bradshaw, and Big Z does a lot of extra things. He steps out. He can actually knock down some jump shots. He can actually dribble the ball a little bit. So. Uh, to see a big a guy that size, and we're and that's no uh, stranger thing. Now, I mean, we're seeing that in the NBA too with with big. So, yes. I would just love to see him in the uniform and play. I, I, I mean, I would too. I really would. Yeah, I, I like him and the idea of having him and Bradshaw uh, playing together. Yes. Um, um, well, well, see, what I'll just add to that, you know, is that in the event that he that he is get placed on the roster and he does have to play. As I'm just saying, you know, just from a fan's perspective, let's please not get overzealous and and don't say let's not jump into. Let's say, oh, let's say, oh, we're gonna win the title and we're gonna go undefeated. No, that's not how college basketball works. And I said, no, not we can now. Always, we can always speculate. I, I mean, you know, I mean, though, we can always speculate that's going to happen, but it's not going. It's probably likely not going to. Yeah, I mean, some fans don't want to hear this word again, ever again. From and I don't understand why we had so much success with it in our undefeated run with Carl Towns, and then we had uh, Booker, and we had some other people, and they're all together, and we had that platoon, and everybody now, if you say the word platoon, they're like, we're never going to platoon again. It's crazy to think, why not? I mean, if you can scramble up enough players. So, I mean, like, if you did platoon right now, if you tried, no one likes to hear that, but if you did, in one area you have Uganda and you have um, – uh, Mitchell, but then also you have uh, Bradshaw and Big Z. So you have two sets of bigs. So th that already starts the idea of platooning because you have two sets of bigs. And instead of saying, well, these two bigs are going to play the most and have the most chance of getting injured now because of this or that or this because they're playing so many more minutes, now you have those two pieces where you can intertwine. And you're like, do you have the other pieces? Yeah, we got plenty of other pieces on the different positions to really make it happen. Not that it's going to happen, so calm down, Big Blue Nation, but I do feel like Big Z really adds the extra messing puzzle piece to this puzzle to create maybe a championship run. I, I see that. I mean, absolutely. And, and I see, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to believe that, I mean, it'll say that the time flies. College basketball starts six weeks from tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> I see, I'm, yeah, I'm ready for it. I, I like college football. I don't mind watching it. it I, I enjoy watching it. But I was at a um, – I was going to say, you went to the season opening game. Yeah, and they, you know that song where they like, um, it just has that rhythm to it. Na -na 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 Go big blue. Na -na 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 -na, right? Yes. They were okay. They were playing that same one at football, right? In Kroger Field, right? Yes. Yeah, and and I'm I'm listening to this, and the fans are like, "Go big blue." Let me tell you, hey, there's 61,000 fans in Kroger Field. Now we know Rupp used to be twenty three five, but now they've down to like it, it's twenty. It's down to capacity is twenty five forty five. So it is it is not as it's a little bit more, I would say like condensed in. Yeah. So, but the difference was, so Rupp being a little bit smaller, obviously, than this big giant football stadium. There's more football fans there than there is at Rupp. 
There's no difference, though. Like, there is no – they – the. I'm a football fan. Love the Cats, right? But I'm telling you, I am telling you. You went to a football game. I've been to a football game. When Kentucky's really rocking in basketball and their team is, like, really good and they're doing something crazy, it gets more electrifying than a whole football stadium. It, it just does. Well, well, I mean, you know, I, I mean, you said it does, I guess, you know, based on – I, I you know it does. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm guessing you know, the probably though my thing is, as I mean, like, like I said, like say if you rewind back to, like, but like maybe a decade, like like over a decade ago, um, I see you know the, the enthusiasm for basketball was, I just you know much higher than it was for football. Yeah, I didn't mean to say it was much higher. I'm guessing. Probably here as of the last three years or so, it, I see you know that momentum has momentum has shifted. I see you know that basically you know just based on the way the last three seasons for the basketball team has gone. Yep. And I mean, you know, say you know, as you know, say football is you know slowly you know like you know like trending up. I mean, you know, some yeah yeah. I mean, you know, say football. I know we haven't they haven't cracked into probably like the upper echelon of the SEC, but they're no. not but they're not at the bottom. No, they're in the middle. And they they play at your, and they and they definitely have a chance to go to like, um, you know, your citrus type bowls and those type of things. Yeah, so you know, say like you we're know, wanting like to go a, a little bit further new, with it. I said like a New Year's Six bowl and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's like I said the football pro. I mean, you know, they made strides. They have. I said they made strides. I mean, look, this seven straight bowls. That's I say that's never happened before. I see that we've not down, not down several doors. You know, like take for example this weekend, this weekend's game with Florida. You know, this Kentucky's had the upper hand as of of late. You know, just they won three of the last five, two of those games in the swamp, and they've beaten and they've beaten Florida back to back times for the first time in. Could oh, they do it three times? Forty five. Could they do it three times? They they could do it three times. Which I don't know when last time that's happened. Gosh, we'd have to go as, in the archives. Yeah, best I know, I don't think it has happened before. Right, we'd have to go back in the archives for that and yeah. to look. I mean, you know, just. I just, you know, let's say, but basically, you know, that's just it. You know, that, like maybe a de- this, like I said, a decade ago, I said, you know, the momentum for basketball was much higher than football. It shifted as of late. Um, honestly, probably know just my thing, you know, with the, you know, with the basketball team. Um, I was asked to probably you know say just just win the games that you're supposed win the games that you should win, and that does include like the high pro. You know, like the high-profile games. Yeah, get I, your Kansas, North Carolinas, Dukes. You know, Michigan States. Yeah, those I, type of games. I see. Yeah, I'm gonna say this game. I see Indiana, that. if you see them. Yeah, that, definitely beat them down. Yeah, that. <laughs> they're not high-profile, but they're that, uh, they're a pest, that, a pest right on your shoulder, and you just <laughs> get them off there. Well, I will say this: I agree with you. I, I do agree with you that uh, some momentum has shifted, but I would just say that's because people are just looking for wins. And when when the Cats basketball team is not in the Final Four or something or winning a national championship, they want to, like, downplay if the season was successful or not. But I'll say this. Like you said, decades ago, it was nowhere near, like, how, how much momentum has shifted now between basketball and football, you know, appreciation and cheering for each one or one or the other. It was always, like, 98% basketball and 2% football. Now it has switched, and it's like a – I don't know if it's 50-50. It's probably 50-50. Um, I've, I've been... The last three seasons probably – 50-50, but I will say this, that's crazy. It took three full seasons of Kentucky really doing not that great for football to get some type of recognition, even with seven straight bowl games. Think about that. They had, they had four other seasons before this they were going straight bowl games, okay? And they were winning those. But Kentucky was still competitive, so everybody was still more 60% basketball, 40% football, you know, if you had to guess it out. But I'd say this, give Kentucky, like as much as the football team does, I hope they go undefeated and make the national championship game. Wouldn't that be great, right? That would really shut up the basketball fans. But if they don't do that and they lose three games, four games, and they play in like, you know, Citrus Bowl 38 or whatever they play in, and they win that, that's good for them, right? Let Kentucky basketball team hop on the floor and be like 14 or 15 and 0 to start the season and watch how much momentum shifts, like, quick. So, well, Kentucky can switch it in 15 games, and it may take the football program decades or three three well, years in a row. Well, it does, and that's the truth. It's not, nothing, well, it's not nothing wrong to say about that. Well, we both were Kentucky fans, but yeah. I just – I'm a big Kentucky basketball fan. Well, I've, I've, well I've, you know, this, I mean, I am too. But, I mean, the, 
I, I guess you know my my thing is you know like like say at the basketball team if, if they do start out fifteen no I'm like it'll be nuts I'm, I'm it'll be see, crazy I'm gonna see yeah I you know what I'm saying I said I'll be excited and I know a lot of other fans will yeah. but in the back of their mind but in the back of a lot of fans mind they'll probably keep their guard up I mean because look I mean because look because we all know how twenty fifteen went. It's true. I mean, I see, but it would just be I, exciting to see that. 15, I, I see, though. yeah, we, yeah, we all gonna keep twenty. You know, if Kentucky starts winning and get undefeated, that I see, you know, the thoughts of twenty fifteen are gonna start growing, and then they're probably thinking, wait a second, is this gonna be de- is it gonna be deja vu like twenty fifteen or what? We, I don't even don't want. Have. I don't even want the thoughts of twenty fifteen. I want the thoughts uh, of twenty twelve. Well, uh, I want the thoughts of twenty twelve. Uh, that know, was a two loss team. Yeah, that's you know, and we still won the national championship. I see. True. So I do not care about undefeated. I just want to win the national championship again, and then I just want to be like, all the people on campus need to realize, we're still a basketball school. Well, I'm <laughs> just well, saying, I mean, why can't well, we I be mean, both? Let's... We can be both, but it's kind of like, all right, if if I have an older sister and and a younger sister, you have siblings, right? Yeah. No matter what you do, your older brother is still your older brother. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's the same thing with Kentucky here. No matter what the football program does, they'll always still be in the shadow of the Kentucky basketball program. Unless they would win a national championship and then another national championship and then okay. another national championship. Okay, that's honestly yeah, that that's you know, say that's 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 sort of, you know, tying into, you know, of course, you know, we all remember, of course, on the big online football school versus basketball school debate. It was that that pretty much that pretty much sounds like World War Forty Five monster. And it's still going online on online. It's still last going year. on, and and yeah, it's still going on. But we I'm, are the same fans who go to the game and cheer. But as soon as someone brings up that this football program is more important to this this school than the basketball program, we're like, whoa. Well, do you understand what the basketball program did for years? That the football when the football program was doing nothing but winning like two games or five games, and they were they were god awful garbage. The basketball yeah. team carried the whole programming. I yeah. mean, the cheerleading squad did good. Volleyball. There was other sports, but I'm just saying the mainstream sport that everybody talked about for Kentucky was college basketball. Well, I'm, I just see, yeah, you, I just see, yeah, I, I just see, but you know, just like you said, I mean, I don't you know. Probably as a fan, I see, you know, don't necessarily delegate yourself, you know, just to. One side or the other. I'm, I mean, you don't just cheering just for two sports. I mean, because like there's I said, tons of it. They're they're good at rifle. They're good I don't at, even they're they're say, all kinds say, of crap. You know, say the rifle the rifle team. They've won some national championships. Yeah. The volleyball team. I think it's like three years removed from a title. And I would support Kentucky at any time. But I'm just gonna say yeah. I don't go to those events. So I'm not gonna say that like you know I cheer cheer for them. I mean, if they're on TV and I see it, yeah, I'm gonna cheer for them. But I don't go to those events. So I'm, that's why I keep well, it more I mean, football and basketball. Sometimes baseball. I'd like to go to a baseball game, but I. I mean, I, I mean, I would too. Yeah, I've been to a couple Aces baseball games, I'm, which are cool because they're local. But yeah, we're from we're from Evansville, Indiana, uh, so we're not from there. But we do like we do like the Cats. But we also like I like the Aces too. I'm alumni from there, and Jay and I have lived here, so we we're fans of the Aces too. I like them. <laughs> I, I just said I like them now. <laughs> so all right, so that's this. We'll. We'll put a pin in that. Uh, put, we'll put a pin in that cap there, and we'll just we'll rest it there on uh, that. There's room for both at the table, but just remember who's head at the table. That's what I would say. Uh, Kentucky basketball. So <laughs> we'll go into the. We'll go into now the uh, real quick. We're gonna cut this. This this segment will be short, and it will be the end of ours. And we'll try to come back like within a week or two weeks to do another show. We'll give some time for stuff to build up. We probably should come back and preview that Florida Kentucky game. So we'll we'll look yeah. into that. But let's say NFL wise, uh, there's nothing really shocking to me. I mean, Kansas City did lose their first game of the uh, season, uh, but they went on to beat Jacksonville, which is a pretty good opponent. Uh, they got the Bears today, and it, I mean, it would surprise me if the Bears won. But you know, hey, it's uh, any given Sunday. Yes. But I feel I feel comfortable when the Bears have been playing badly, and so I'm a, I'm a Chiefs fan, and so I'm just happy for that. But you know, the Buffalo Bills are one and one. I think the Cincinnati Bengals are like zero and yeah, two. Yeah, you know, I say I see though the the, ben, the Bengals are zero and two. It's it's weird a little. Yeah, I mean it's weird, but I see. But then again, this I mean we're, we're just in week we're just in week, week three. three, week three, and week three. It's a I, lot do you feel like it'll of change? Do, I, do you of, feel of, like it'll change? Of, I mean, of course it will. Do you think the Bengals, the Bills, the Chiefs, they're going to find their feet? 
they'll they'll be at the top when it's all said and done. They'll be they'll, they'll be, they'll be the in the wild cards or at least in their divisional winner. Oh position. yeah, yeah, they will. They'll, I see they'll be a, or close to it. I mean, and the, you know, I said there might be there might be some other teams. You know, mm-hmm. there might be I, that was that I would consider you know dark horses. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, what I'm Cleveland's yeah. one of them, I, and they were winning earlier against Tennessee, like twenty four to three or something. Yeah, you know, I say Cleveland could be one. Miami is definitely another. Miami's really good at uh, their defense is kicking in and they can score. Yes, they can score. I say, yes, they can. I, mm-hmm. I said Miami could be one. Also, I'm I'm looking at another one. Detroit. Detroit yeah, could be Detroit. another. One. Yeah, they 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 got Kansas City by a point, but then they kind of messed up in their second game. But they were winning just recently in their third game, so. They might be sitting at two and one, I think, by now. We don't know the full scores. We haven't looked at since we've been recording. Yeah. Uh, in the NFC, I'm going to say this, I, and I didn't get to make we didn't get to make predictions because we didn't have our sports show beforehand. So I'm just uh, going to go ahead and say my prediction now is the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Dallas Cowboys in the Super Bowl. And everybody thinks, oh, it's crazy to say that. I said it a, a few years back, and I was wrong because Dallas ended up choking and Dak Prescott ended up doing so. Look. This is a different Cowboys team. This team is not built on just Dak and Amari Cooper. This is about Dallas's defense, and, and I think they're well, legit. Well, I mean, you know, well, I, you know, I agree. You know, I said, I'm gonna say their their defense is good. Mm-hmm. I said their defense is good. I mean, I mean, you know, we all, I mean, look, we all saw what they did to the Giants opening week. Craziness, and then they had a, they followed it up with a good second week. Yeah. I and mean, now they're at Arizona, no co- uh, no Murray out there for um, Arizona because he's still injured, yeah, right? I just said, but I just said, but the, the Cowboys, they did lose one of their defensive stars. I think it's Diggs. Yes. I said, yeah, they, they lost yeah. him for the year. So yeah. it may mess up the secondary a little bit, but I mean, you know, it's still. That pass rush is daunting that they have. So, I, I, I mean, they're a good, they're just a good unit, yeah. period. They are a I good mean, unit. listen, I was, you know, I said, look, it's, it's. Still it's, early. it's still early. Still early. It's, it's but still. if you had to take a pick right now, like I did, I just threw it out there. Kansas City, Dallas. Who do you like? Do you like the same two? Do you like that, or do you like something different? Mm. Let's see. Well, that's, well, I said no. The AFC probably unless somebody knocks them off. Otherwise, they have to go. They have to go with Kansas City. Go with Kansas City. <sighs> NFC. I don't know. I said no. NFC is kind of. And the NFC may be a little difficult. I mean, I mean, no, Dallas could. No, Philly's the defending NFC champs, and Philly could very much make it. Also, could San Francisco? Mm-hmm. I'm not not gonna leave out the 49ers. It's, uh, I said, I don't know. It's this year. It seems like it's a little bit challenging, mainly because you feel like because I feel like you know, say the NFL's a little. It's a little bit more paired. You know this. It, like I said, it's just week three, but it's it's different. A lot of different teams, you know, could, you know, make it to the Super Bowl. Right. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, you never know. Yeah. I, you could. I mean, I mean, they'll say. The, so what's your two though? Who you're picking right now? You said Kansas City and who? Oh uh, man, I don't know. The, I don't know the NFC. I don't know. I'm having a little trouble with the NFC pick right now because. But if you had to pick today, I know you're going to have trouble with it, but if you said, okay, if I had to pick today and I had to pick one, because my life depends on it, I'm picking this team. Uh, well, I mean, in that case, I have to go out west to go with San Francisco. Okay, he's going to say Kansas City, San Francisco. They had a Super Bowl uh, a couple years back together, didn't they? Yeah, it was Super Bowl 54. Kansas City won that, of course. Yeah. Um, I, so if you said Kansas City, San Francisco this time around, would you give San Francisco the nod to say they're going to win this time, or would you let Kansas City you say Kansas City's going to win again? Uh, I'll say for the Cowboys, Chiefs, I'm going to take my Chiefs to win. But who would you take in the Super Bowl if it was Kansas City versus San Francisco? Hmm. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I'm probably. Had, I mean, I might have to go with the Chiefs again. Yeah, if the Chiefs win another Super Bowl. This young and Patrick Mahomes' career. Well, I mean, this it, it would be crazy for his career stats. I mean, it, then you'd have to start really putting him in a lot of conversations, like a lot of conversations. And I know some people are going to say, "Well, Brady has like what eight or seven? I was going to say he's got. I mean, he's got seven. Yeah, he's got seven. But Pat's just doing it so quickly. That's the key. Well, I it, well, I mean, you stuff. know, it's well. Let's see if I don't know. Okay, the, 
I mean, let's take it. Okay, Mahomes. Okay, Mahomes is twenty-eight. Uh, as you know, Brady he won his first Super Bowl at twenty-four, mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah, he won his first Super Bowl at twenty-four. So, I, I guess you know they're kind of like on the. Yeah, because Pat's kinda like on the. Pat's won two now, but he's been to three. Yeah. So then his first yeah, one was yeah, around that twenty-five. Yeah, Pat's won two, and he's yeah. been to three. As you know, as you know, Brady, you know, he won one, two, about three. Three in his first four, three of his first four, I believe. Yeah. So, in a way, they, they're kind of they're kind of on the same on the same track. Yep. Somewhat. Uh, Pat is a little bit more. If he can do it and pull it off as many as what Brady has, he'll do it in a more dynamic fashion, and I think that'll speak well, more volumes. He'll well, have I more mean, highlight this, reels. Well, I mean, you know this because of well, his no looks and his. Well, I mean, that's what well, I mean by that. Okay. I, I see, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Cause yeah. I mean, to say, because. But he I may mean, not ever get to eight. He might get to four or five. But let's say Pat goes, let's say they would hypothetically go to three more Super Bowls and he would win all three of those. Let's say that. Let's say he wins one. Let's say this year they don't go to another one for another two years and he wins one and then they don't go to another one for another year or two after that and he wins that one. And then he, like, retires. So that would be three there plus two, already, plus three he's already been to. That would put him at five and one. In Super Bowls, and let's say he gets all five, and he's Super Bowl MVP in those five. So he had five rings, five Super Bowl MVPs. Of course, the AFC Championships that go along with it, obviously, and those AFC MVP, AFC Championship MVP as well. I'm just saying that alone to me is enough to say. Even though I don't have eight, it's not all just about rings too. Sometimes it's about how many times you've been to that well, game and did not lose or win. I don't know how many times Brady has went. Like he, uh, I think he went to ten Super Bowls. Yeah, yeah, he's he's been ten times and, and once and won seven. And he's won so, seven. So if Pat goes to six and wins five, I mean the, the, that's the, a heck of accomplishment. Well, I mean you know they'll, they'll still be on the same. I mean they'll be on the same. I mean if that happens, I mean you probably had no choice but to claim both of them as the two greatest quarterbacks. Period. I would say if I'm running a, if I'm running a team and they said you get to have Brady or you get to have Pat. And let's say Pat does finish five out of six of winning them, and they said you only get one to start in a Super Bowl. I'm going to go with the guy who won more of his Super Bowls. That's what I'm going to do because he's more clutch in that I winning mean, the Super Bowl. Well, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, we'll just say both of them are sim both of them are similar. Similar. To I, I mean, extent. I mean, let's say you know similar in stats. You know, just I mean, different in their playing style. I just, I'm just and they have both. something really crazy and familiar. They both have Hall of Fame coaches. Yes. And at the time, we didn't really know if, you know, Belichick was going to be that Hall of Fame as he is. But he is. Mm -hmm. Andy Reid, Hall of Fame. Yes. Right? And then if we look at it, I've, Gronkowski, Gron tied in. Gronkowski and Kelsey. Kelsey I was just going to say that. So yes. the combination out there, guys, it's not a superstar quarterback, good coach, and a good receiver. It's a great coach, a great quarterback, and a great tight end. You and have I, that. I say, you got to make sure you have a dynamic offensive line that protects the quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, th those are important pieces. And your defense got to be good. And Chris Jones coming back helped, helped the Chiefs last week. So they'll be good at defense. Um, I saw a stat that said Kansas City's getting ready to play uh, some, a lot of teams right now that have like a 1-11 combined record or something. Like I think to start this week's out or something because they're playing like the Bears coming up and then they got some other games. They might win. They might win their next few games. We'll see. We'll see what they do. But it's exciting. Uh, I'm excited about it. So today we let's, – let's do this. Choke me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, All right. So yeah. we we did that for a thumbnail because we we argued about Kentucky versus basketball <laughs> or Kentucky basketball versus Kentucky football, which is crazy for two fans to argue about that. And then we argued about Brady and Mahomes. I'm of course I'm going to go with Mahomes, but he's a Brady guy. Well, or somewhat. Well, I've I've I said look I said, look I'm I'm neutral. Neutral. I said, yeah, I'm neutral. I see you don't say I like my homes. I used to hate like I used to could not stand Tom Brady, but then again There's some respect for it. I I mean see, look, I mean you gotta have respect for a guy that's won seven Super Bowls, so you got to. Okay. Good job, Brady and Brady fans. All right guys, here's what we're gonna do. Yeah. We're gonna cut oh, this Oh go ahead, uh, go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I said we've got there's more NFL week three action I see though tonight. You got the Oh bunch of games. Yeah, they got the Ste uh tonight the NBC's the Steelers Raiders and then you got Doubleheader Monday? You got two Monday night games. You got the Eagles, Bucks, and the Rams, Bengals. Check those out. Bengals need a win. They got to get a win. They they go 0-3. Ooh, yeah. that's going to be a tough hole to dig out of. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be a tough hole to dig out of. So, 
All right, because uh, if you go three and zero to start the season, you got like seventy five percent chance to make the playoffs. If you go zero and three, whoa! Not saying that the Bengals wouldn't make it, so calm down, Bengals fan. I'm just saying statistically. So don't lose that game if you're Bengals. Please do something. Uh, but actually, I want the Rams to do really well because I have that Panuka or whatever his name is. Sorry if I mispronounced name, but he's awesome. What a great receiver, young receiver he is. Uh, but yeah, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut it short because I know we're about 25 minutes in on this film here, and we're gonna cut it short. Uh, cut it off now. That way, it's not too long, but it probably is long. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, we hope you guys enjoyed this. We will be back probably before Sunday, or probably before Saturday. Let's try to meet up before Saturday. Let's yeah. preview that Florida Kentucky game. Yeah. Let's give them that, and it'll be a shorter video because it only involves Florida versus Kentucky. But the only way you're gonna know is to go to Twitter and follow. I mean, so you can follow me at Gerard Baker One, and you can go to me at, at uh, what is mine? It's John G UK. There we go at John G UK, <laughs> or hit the subscribe button now here on this channel, little bell, be notified next time we upload, and get ready for our preview for Florida versus Kentucky. So guess what? Gator trash fans, that's what you are right oh, there. <laughs> Please come back and watch because we're going to dog the oh, crap out of you. Oh, but... And I can't wait. <laughs> that's all we have. Are you excited about it? I'm excited. I'm, 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 I, I, am, I am excited. Let's go. Let's go for it. So we'll see you guys next time. Hit that <laughs> bell. We'll catch you. In Florida, you're going down. That's all we have, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share. Until next time, guys. Peace out. See y'all.